Hi folks, welcome to my YouTube channel. The basic objective of making these videos is to understand the basic histology and the associated pathology with it. These video series are mainly for the beginners. So I have started my video series starting from the placenta because it is the most common organ you will encounter working on the surgical bench or working during your sign out sections. So it's starting from the intro, as we know that the placenta is a fetal maternal organ, which is involved in nutrition, waste elimination and gas exchange between the developing fetus and the mother. It is mainly composed of umbilical cord, amniotic or the fetal membranes, which are two layers, the amnion, which is the inner layer, and the outer layer is the chorion. And, and especially the placental disc, which carries the most waste of the placenta, it is a rounded disc-shaped organ, which has the two surfaces. One is the fetal surface, which is also called as a chorionic plate, and the other is the maternal surface, which uh, contains the cotyledons. So when you will have a specimen at the surgical bench, this is the normal grass specimen of the placenta. This, is, this represents the fetal surface. The opposite aspect represents the uh, maternal side, and there is a white thin rope-like structure, which is known as the umbilical cord. As in this picture, we can see that it is centrally attached, which is the normal anatomical position. Sometimes it is it has the different types of insertion. Say, for example, one of the abnormalities of velometrous insertion, which is uh, it, the plancen, uh, the umbilical cord is commonly attached above the fetal surface, and then it gives rise to the vessels uh, which can uh, goes or which can penetrate the fetal surface of the placenta. So when you receive the placenta on your surgical working on the surgical bench, you have to make a comment where the placenta, uh, where the umbilical cord is attached on the placenta. And second, when you, after you detach the umbilical cord on the placenta, when you make a cross sections, you have to determine how many vessels it contains. Normal anatomically, it contains three vessels, two umbilical arteries and one umbilical vein cushions by the water's jelly. If you are working on surgical bench and if you determine that there are two vessels, then it could be the one of the reason it, it, that it, it has some fetal anomalies uh, at the same time. So you have to make a comment whether the umbilical car contain three vessels or the two vessels. And on the fetal surface here, we can see that it is a chain gray and histologically it is made up mainly of the primary and the secondary villa, which we will discuss further when we discuss on the histology. On the maternal side, it is mainly composed of the cotyledons. These are the thin, red, spongy, and the soft, uh, soft tissues. When you work on the surgical bench, you have to make a comment on the intactness and the completeness of these cotyledons. If you see that the cotyledons are incomplete and they are not intact, you can make a courtesy call to the surgeons and saying that the cotyledons are absent on the specimen, a specimen, and so they can follow up the patient if the uh, cotyledons are absent on the specimen, it means they are is still in the uterus of the patient. So it can further lead to the vaginal bleeding or the sepsis, etc. So you can make a courtesy call as well. So uh, going to the microscopy, we can start from the umbilical cord. The outer layer of the umbilical cord is made up by the single layer of the amniotic membrane, which is the inner membrane. And then it continues with the amniotic membrane of the fetal surface of the placenta. It contains the two umbilical arteries and one umbilical vein, which are cushions by this mucopolysaccharide ground substance, uh, which is also known as, as the water's jelly. There are two points you can distinguish between the artery and the vein. One is the thick muscular wall present into the arteries. And the other point is that 
uh, the umbilical vein has the wider lumen which is also called as a mouth lumen and uh, in the um, fetal life or during the embryonic life the umbilical vein carries the oxygenated blood compared to the arteries which carries the deoxygenated blood so going uh, discussing about the fetal membranes as we discussed earlier it is made up of two layer one is the amnion which is the inner layer and the other is the chorion which is the outer layer and hence this represents the decidua basalis which is which is the maternal aspect or it represents the endometrium so the number here one here is the amniotic membrane which represents the small cuboidal lying epithelium one one of the sign is that when these cuboidal cells becomes columnar we call it as amniotic membrane columnarization which represents one of the fetal distress during the embryonic life and then there is a space which which is determined or indicated by the number 2 here it is known as extracellulomic space which is in between the amnion and the chorion it's a empty space there is a no connective tissue so you can peel off the amniotic and the chorion membrane when while working on the surgical bench while a chorion has a directly distinct boundary with the decidua basalis and decidua basalis and one last point on the amniotic uh, connective tissue that sometimes if you go on high power during microscopy or histologically you can see a macrophages uh, tinged with the tan brown substance which represents the meconium staining pattern and here is the decidua which are the plump cells which are under the progesterone effect and they can produce more protein and they can accumulate the glycogen so they become more plumpy or acquire more cytoplasm and the natural law is that they are acquiring more protein in the glycogen so they can feed the developing fetus so this these uh, villi represents the fetal surface these villi is the gestational air progresses the size of the villi becomes decrease and decrease it is like a natural law when they require a greater surface they are bigger in size when they require the lower surface they decrease in size and the in talking about the histology of these villi they are composed of the two cells the outer layer is the syncytial trophoblast syncytial trophoblast is the name indicate that they these cells are connected with each other and the lower layer is called as the cytotrophoblast the function of the cytotrophoblast is to make the hcg human chorionic gonadotropin hormone which maintains the pregnancy and the lower cytotrophoblast layer is to mainly takes place role in the gas exchange as the gestational age progresses these syncytial trophoblast condensed is the one place and these are known as the syncytial nodes when they condense which each other the cytotrophoblast becomes exposed so they can play a role in gas exchange and here in this villa you can see these small capillaries one or two endothelial cells and in the center there is a rbc so this represents the fetal blood the rbcs in between these two villa is these are represents the maternal blood and here there uh, it will uh, the gas exchange will take place is the uh, when during the initial days of the pregnancy what happened these a uh, villa penetrates into the decidua basalis of the endometrium and then they cause the rupture of the spiral arteries when the spiral artery is rupture the rbcs comes out and they lay between in these two villi and uh, and also there there will be the formation of the fibrin which we will discuss in our next few videos 
So the, this uh, picture represents the implantation site. So this is uh, here. Uh, first, we can see these very long torturous glands. These are the endometrial glands, which represent the secretive portion of the endometrium. And here we can see these endometrial stromal cells, which, I, which have acquired more cytoplasm and they appear very pinkish. It means they have more protein synthesis and more glycogen. So they can produce more protein and more nutrition for the developing fetus. And here we can see some thickened arteries, these spiral arteries. When the villi penetrate into here at the implantation side, these spiral arteries break down and the RBCs goes out. So this is the end of my video. And this is uh, these are the basic histology. And as we progress, we will discuss about the inflammatory and the neoplastic condition associated with the plant